والمسكين وابن السبيل ولا تبذر تبذيرا وقال جل في علاه فآت ذا القربى حقه والمسكين وابن السبيل ذلك خير للذين يريدون وجه الله وأولئك هم المفلحون لقد سأل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أصحابه يوما أتدرون من المفلس قالوا المفلس فينا من لا درهم له ولا دينار وفي رواية من لا درهم له ولا متاع فقال المفلس من أمتي من يأتي يوم القيامة بصلاة وزكاة وصيام ويأتي وقد شتم هذا وقذف هذا وأكل مال هذا وسفك دم هذا وضرب هذا فيعطي هذا من حسناته وهذا من حسناته فإن فنيت حسناته قبل أن يقضي ما عليه أخذ من خطاياهم فطرحت عليه ثم طرح في النار رواه مسلم Respected brothers and sisters in Islam We continue to understand our duties and responsibilities as most kind helpful beneficial and productive member in the human society and we try to understand the truth about Islam which is very rarely found nowadays and we try to check out that the demonizing of Islam and Muslims which is continuing by the media how far they are true and how much falsehood they are mixing so we find that it's not even one person truth in what they are claiming about Islam and Muslims We'll speak today about our civic responsibilities. <coughs> and civic responsibility is not as a modern 21st century individual who is living in the most modern country, the richest and the most powerful one. But we'll take you back to 1438 years to the era of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Obviously, the conclusion of Islam as a religion was on his hand. He was not the one who founded Islam. Islam was founded by God Almighty through his first creation that is Prophet Adam who was the first man who was given the title of Khalifa in chapter 2 verse 30 and Khalifa is a vice jirant a trustee of God on face of earth then the message continued in its phases of development through the phases of development of human intellect 
prophets and messengers were coming and the messages were modified according to the social change in the community addressing the common good of the community until according to the supreme plan of god almighty when humanity reached the highest point of excellence in their intellectual abilities the message was perfected and completed that was the time when the last and final prophet muhammad was raised and in this long history of the development of the islamic legal system political system and caliphate system from the time time of adam to muhammad peace be upon all the prophets and messengers in that system five prophets are considered to be the greatest you can read chapter 42 verse 13 <coughs> they are noah abraham moses jesus and muhammad may choices peace and blessings of god be upon each and every one of them they are given the title of the prophets of the resolution and all these five prophet prophets and messengers if we take them as our role models you know we can despite the bad condition throughout the world where we see lots of genocides and wars lots of injustice and unfair treatment and violation of rights of the people we can still with our individual and group is struggle bring the justice to this troubled world and as a result we can achieve the peace but in order to do that we have to come out of our ghetto mentality the mentality of small groups every group is rejoicing him or herself you know every individual in that group is only connected to that small thing as mentioned in chapter 23 verses 51 and 52 that god almighty created one group that is the entire human kind and this group is called ummah connected to eve the first woman dignifying the women although the first man was adam but we are connected to our first mother eve then in chapter 49 verse 13 god almighty tell us that the whole purpose of creating this universe you know is to spread the knowledge say like the prophet peace be upon him said about the about god almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a hadith qudsi reporting and relating to god god said i was a hidden treasure and i wanted to be known so i started creating so the knowledge was given the reason in that chapter 42 verse 13 god says we made you into nations and tribes you know and the reason is not given that to fight each other to commit genocide against each other to void to violate the rights of other human being none of those the reason god almighty gave was litarafu so you may give a engage into a process as individuals as group as nations as tribes 
any section of the humanity, you can engage into finding about each other. That is the only way to remove the hatred and fear, which comes as a result of ignorance. And the religion was founded on three major foundations. From the time of Adam to Muhammad, peace be upon all the prophets, what were those three foundations? One universal God. See, the real God is only one. One universal humanity. You want to read about one universal God, you can go to chapter 2 verse 163. Chapter 2 verse 255. You can go to chapter 59 verses 22 to 24 and it goes on and on in many, many chapters and verses of the Holy Quran. The second foundation was one universal humanity which I have just recited verse 13 of chapter 42. This one universal humanity according to divine message and when we talk about divine message we are including all the prophets and messengers is the point of distinction of the humanity who are given the title of Ashraful Makhluqat the most honorable creation of God Almighty their point of distinction is freedom of choice. Freedom of choice. Every human being is required to respect the choices of others. Every human being is required from chapter 60 verse 8 to treat each other with the bear and best. Bear is love and kindness. Best is justice and fairness. No matter what is the choice of a human being. Whether it is approved by God in His holy scriptures or not approved. Whether it is a believer or non-believer or atheist. God said in his message, there is no compulsion in religion. Everyone has, as a very basic human right, most fundamental is the freedom of choice. And when you accept that, that you have the freedom to be whatever you want, then everybody else has the same freedom that a wrong choice of another person should not make you hate that person or to unjustly or unfairly treat that person. If you do that, you will be held responsible on the day of judgment. And the third dimension is one universal message. Divine message is only one which was conveyed by all the prophets and messengers who were raised by God Almighty in all the parts of the world, starting from the time of first man and first prophet Adam to the last and final prophet. That is the divine message. And that is why we say about Jews and Christians, Together with the Muslims, these are the three branches of Abrahamic religion. All three of us agree on Prophet Abraham and we find our connections in there. And that is the reason in the Holy Quran, God Almighty, if you would like to read it, read it, there are many verses. Let me give you one example. Surah number 3, chapter number 3, verse number 64. Where Muslims are required to cooperate with the Jews and Christians because all these three communities share believing in one universal God. قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ أَلَّا نَعْبُدَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَا نُشْرِكَ بِهِ شَيْئًا 
We agree. We cooperate with each other. Why? Because we are representing God on face of earth. So, my teacher used to say, and I repeatedly mentioned through these sermons, that unity of the humankind is impossible unless the believing communities, you know, the religious leaders of every section of the humankind, they unite between themselves. They find the common grounds and they cooperate with each other. Chapter number 5, verse number 2, God Almighty is giving in a commandment, it's an imperative command, cooperate with each other on the things which are from goodness, from righteousness, from piety, and what creates sense of companionship with God Almighty. And do not cooperate with each other on aggression or on sin. So brothers, start with your own family. Then go in your own neighborhood. Your civic duty is related to every other human being in your community. If in my neighborhood there are some old age people who need my help, this is my Islamic and religious duty to go and help them. A man came to the Prophet and he asked, O oh, Messenger of God, what is my neighborhood? Can you describe it for me? So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, 40 houses in every direction. Not only that, he said, it's from among your neighbors. If one person sleeps without the food, and you have satisfied yourself by eating your dinner, you are not a believer. You are not a believer. <coughs> no matter what you do. The prophet said, and he took the oath three times in the name of God Almighty. Wallahi la yumin. By God, that person is not a believer. When he was, he was asked, who are you talking about? So he said, the one, may he be a man or she be a woman, the one who does not spare his neighbors from his or her annoyance. You have to participate in neighborhood watch. You have to look into the problems in the community. You have your duties and responsibilities to stand and go for a protest. If the rights of certain, you know, African Americans are violated, or the rights of any other community violated, you have to participate in standing because every single human being deserves to be treated with the love and kindness and justice and fairness and those are the glorious words of God Almighty. Unless we start this in our own communities, we are not going to make these demonization of the, you know, the media wrong. Because we have to live. Actions will be speaking louder than words. And we did not do enough in this regard. Let me give you the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Everybody knows in this hall that God Almighty chose him to be the prophet when he was 40 years old. When he was 19 years old, 
An incident took place in his community. Young man, teenager. What was the incident? There was a Zubaydi tribe. From that tribe, a businessman brought some business good and he sold them to a Sahmi tribe person whose name was Al Asi ibn Wa'il. And when he took all these trading goods and he bought, he said to this Zubaydi individual, get out of here, I'm not going to pay you. So the man went to the house of God in Mecca. As you know, chapter 3, verses 96 and 97, that was the first house of God which was ever built on face of earth. And the victim of this aggression started shouting. That how can you do that? Oh people of Mecca, oh tribe of Quraysh, you live in a city where the house of God is. You were known to be noble in your treatment. When he started doing that, and by the way, in the chapter number 4, verse number 148, God Almighty says that it is not allowed, it is not allowed to shout with the evil speaking ill about other people except it is allowed for the victim of aggression and a victim who was calling that what happens after that the uncle of the prophet as Zubair and the prophet himself they both came they collected number of noble people from the community and a, an old person he made the feast and food and there they established a new organization which was called Helpful Fudul, the Pact of Excellence and this group went to this al asi who, who wanted not, who, who does not, who did not want to pay this person and forced him to pay his money. Look at the very short saying of the Prophet. Unsur akhaka waliman aw magluman. Help your brother. And here the meaning is brother in humanity. You have to help him. Whether he is a victim or an aggressor. People said, oh messenger of God, we know how to help and a victim deserves to be helped. But how can I help the aggressor? The Prophet said by stopping him from his aggression. That is your duty and your responsibility. When he became the Prophet, his wife was speaking. She wasn't speaking. He was When he, you know, received the first revelation, the wife who was for 15 years his wife, she is talking about from your, you know, birth till the age 40, you have portrayed in your own community that you are one individual who has here some pain for everybody else, who is quick to go and to help, who doesn't see the old people carrying the heavy bags of the grocery, who goes and helps the orphan and needy and all that. So she said, that is the reason. You deserve to be the last and final prophet of God. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the time is coming and up, so let me give you a number of stories. But unfortunately, we don't have time to go through that. But let me tell you the last and final word. The essence of the message of Islam, that is, to serve the humanity is the greatest deed of righteousness. And to violate the human right is the greatest sin. You will be asked about it on the day of judgment. 
No matter how righteous you were, you will not enter the paradise unless you pay back all the human rights which you have violated in your life. And the currency on that day will not be money. On the day of judgment, the currency will be your own deeds. First you pay, that was the hadith of saying of the Prophet I recited, that the people will come with the prayer and fasting and righteousness of all kind. But at the same time they have violated so many rights. So they will not enter the paradise unless fulfill their duty in repaying all those people with their deeds of righteousness first. And when the deeds of righteousness will come to an end, they will start taking the bad deeds of those whom they have violated their rights. So brothers and sisters in Islam, the sign of being a good believer is your service to the humanity, your involvement in the community. And whoever does that is going to be loved by God Almighty. Let us all pray to God Almighty to grant a speedy recovery to all the sick people and his forgiveness to all those who have passed away. Grant the humanity and the Muslim community all together to come back to their senses and start the real work of the humanity by touching the life of so many people they can touch and moving forward people to the path of justice and fairness, love and kindness to attain the real true peace from God Almighty. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إرغاما لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين من صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصمم وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة الجمعين والتابعين وتبع التابعين وسلف الصالحين وأولياء الكاملين وعلماء الراسخين إلى يوم الدين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المؤمنين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباقي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأهم وأتم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة